afternoon from Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry, and today we are talking about a flower that grows along the fields, the roadside, the meadows, and possibly even in your own garden in great abundance, as it does in ours, and that is the field lily, also known as the daylily. The Greek name for the daylily is Homericollis, meaning beautiful for a day, and that's because the bloom of the daylily only lasts one day. It blooms, it dies, and a new one takes its place, and you can see on this stem how many buds there are. And these will bloom consistently throughout the month of June, sometimes even into July. The plant is Asian in origin and was probably introduced to America in the early 1600s. It's very adaptable, it loves all sorts of soils and climates, and therefore it's probably a pretty common plant all throughout the world. But how many of you have ever eaten the daylily? Because almost all parts of the daylily are edible. When I first moved here to East Tennessee, one of the first things we noticed were all the beautiful wild daylilies growing along the creek bank and in the fields on the property. And over the years they have just spread like crazy, as you've seen in the video this morning that I was showing you. It's almost like a park just full of daylilies. Despite the fact that we had all these flowers growing here, I never ever thought of eating them. Until about a year ago when I realized that many people forage for these plants and use them as wild food. So being an edible flower, I thought it was just about time to look into it. So I found several recipes for the daylily, and I'd like to try a couple of them today. We're going to be using the tubers, and we're going to be using the lovely buds. We're going to be using the fresh flowers, and we could have used the little green buds, which they say are wonderful sautéed with garlic but I don't think we'll go quite that far. Now one thing I have been reading about is that you have to be careful with the daylilies. They don't agree with all people's digestive systems and uh, it's best to try take a few, give it a try, taste a few leaves, uh, not leaves, taste a few petals, make sure they agree with you and then go from there. Most people consider the bud the most delicious part of the daylily. And I've decided to use these with a batter. And what you want to do is you want to pick the buds if you're going to deep fry them. You want to pick them just about the day before they're ready to open up. And you can see what they look like before they're ready to open up. Now the really delicate tiny green ones, these very tiny ones, supposedly are really, really good as stir fry cooked with garlic, maybe some chives and parsley. We're not going to try those today, but we are going to definitely use these lovely buds. I'm going to use a beer batter with mine, but in, in exchange of the beer, because I don't happen to have any beer, I am exchanging it with any carbonated drink, which you could probably use carbonated water or any carbonated drink at all. And since the only thing I have is Diet Mountain Dew, that's what I'm going to use. So. We're going to add one cup of Diet Mountain Dew, one egg, and one teaspoon of salt to make our batter. So, one cup of flour. I'm using cake flour in this case. One teaspoon of salt. One egg. doesn't have to be a blue egg. It's just that that's what my hens lay, blue eggs. and one cup of carbonated drink whisk that together and while you're doing that whisk that together and while you're doing that heat up in a cast iron pan or whatever it is you have heat up some olive oil with butter I 
on high heat. Dip your little bud in the batter, pop it in the oil. Make sure you turn it. quite good. I helped myself. I had to taste one and they're really good. And the batter is really light and you can't taste that Mountain Dew at all. So don't worry about using a carbonated drink like Mountain Dew or 7-Up if that's all you have. So look at that. It's really good. In our second recipe we're using the entire flour and we're going to take a very tiny bit of either ricotta cheese or mozzarella cheese and we're going to stuff it right into the center. Just stuff it in there. We're going to fold over the petals like so and then we're going to secure it with a toothpick right down into the stem which will be removed right after we saute these. Now all you're doing with these is you're just sautéing them on each side and your butter and you just want that cheese to melt inside. So as soon as you've done that, pretty quickly, pretty quickly, that doesn't want to flip over, does it? There we go. Then you'll remove them from the heat. We're going to make use of the flower petals. Now you can just deep fry these as well. You can cook these with a batter. You can dip them in a beaten egg and then dredge them in a flour mixture and then fry them like bacon. Here you can see I've just dipped the petals in a beaten egg, dredged them in flour, and now I am going to fry them. Be sure you flip these over. And they're going to be nice and crunchy. See that? It just looks like a tiny piece of bacon. Brings us to the root of the plant, which would be the little tubers here. And daylilies are pretty shallow and easy to dig up. And if you have lots and lots of them, then this is worth a try. Just sort of a like a little delicacy type of a food. But you can see that these little tubers look like tiny little potatoes. They've got lots and lots of roots on them. And the easiest way to do it, in my opinion, get these really clean outside because it's a messy job. But then when you bring them in, cut the little tubers off. Little potatoes. And I just took some kitchen shears and cut them each end and then washed them very, very carefully. Now it seems like an awful lot of work to go through just to um, 
separate these tiny little roots and you don't get a whole lot when you're done. You just get this itsy bitsy potato like thing. But if you think about our history and our past and what our ancestors had to go through in order to get a meal, or if you think about food rationing during World War II, especially in England, where um, there wasn't a whole lot to eat and you really did, it really did help if you could forage for food, I am sure that a farm wife would have been delighted to find a patch of daylilies nearby and she could have made a wonderful stew or added something to that little piece of meat that she had cooking in the pot. So this is more of a experiment. Give it a try because um, it's kind of interesting to know what you could do if you had to forage for your meals. And I didn't get a whole lot as you can see, I didn't get a whole lot, but I think I'm going to boil these, maybe with some baby carrots, butter, and chives. And now for the prettiest dish with daylilies would be a beautiful salad. And it's most likely that that is what I will be using daylilies for most often, is the salad, because that is something we eat a lot of. These are just fresh spinach leaves, a little bit of leaf lettuce, but mostly spinach. And some diced avocado. Feta cheese. Chopped walnuts. Of course, whatever you like. And of course, you washed daylilies. How sweet and lovely. I'm going to toss that a little bit before we get going. And then the vinaigrette that we made was from a recipe from P. Allen Smith. He used white wine vinegar. I used rice vinegar because that's what I had, white rice vinegar, which works, I think, just as well. Okay, today are of course day lilies and black eyed Susan and the wonderful contrast of the purple larkspur and the last of the bachelor buttons. And our guests are two little vegetarians who absolutely love to eat day lilies and carrots. These are just two of my little mid sized rabbits that were hopping around the neighborhood and I invited them to lunch. So, beautiful presentation. And I think we'll put ranch dressing right there in the middle. And here, inside of this cabbage, are the tubers cooked with baby carrots, parsley, butter, and pepper. And you know what? They're pretty good. And then, our beautiful spinach salad. You see we've got a couple bugs that have come to join us for lunch. We'll have to get rid of them pretty darn quick. I think this salad is extraordinarily beautiful. I think it's wonderful when you can throw flowers into your salad and what a contrast. You know I don't really love the color orange but in this case I think I'm going to change my mind because that orange in that salad looks absolutely marvelous. So I would not put the vinaigrette on 
um, I would let each person put that on themselves and put it on their bowl in their plate and put the amount of dressing that they wanted. So that brings us to our plates. We've got quite a mixture of plates today and they're mix and match really chosen for the subject matter and the colors of course which are green and I love these plates they are just nothing but vegetables on these plates I have an onion a cabbage a cauliflower <laughs> and this asparagus and this is called primitive artisan made in Indonesia I just found these on eBay absolutely love this hair plate I should say rabbit hair it's more like a hair to me than a rabbit but I love this plate and it is fine porcelain and it is called artistic accents and these are more like something you'd find in a gift store but actually I found these on eBay and I believe they were sent to me from Canada these marvelous cabbages, lettuces, not quite sure <laughs> what they are, but whatever they are, they're absolutely charming. And these were actually made from ceramic molds. A company called the Holland Mold Company, I believe they were in, well, they were in America, I'm not quite sure, I think in California. But um, they would make the molds, the rubber molds, back in the 1940s and upwards, and then you could buy the mold and a ceramicist would actually make these. So these were for home hobbyists to make. The mold would say Holland Mold Company on the bottom and then the ceramicist would put their own little marking on them. So these are great little terrines. They're great soup terrines or salad or just little serving dishes. So how appropriate <laughs> for day lilies today to serve these. Although wouldn't they be great with pea soup in them too? And today's beautiful picture holding our iced tea is another work of art from Bordalo Pintiero, handmade in Portugal. And the beautiful cabbage leaf platter was also made by Bordalo Pintiero. To say though, the tea is really, really one of my favorite things on the table. It is simply frozen limeade concentrate, one can mixed with seven cups of tea. I did, I used three tea bags in seven cups of water, let it cool down, and added the lime juice concentrate to the mixture. And you know what? It required, or actually it called for one cup of sugar, but I didn't put any sugar in it at all because you really don't need any. It is pretty sweet. It's kind of sweet tart and it really doesn't need sugar. Of course, if you want sugar, you can add the sugar too, but I'm happy to say that I didn't need any in this case. So by now you might be wondering what on earth does daylily taste like? And I will tell you that as far as eating a daylily petal, it is very mild and a little bit sweet and naturally it has a bit of a floral taste to it because it is a flower. But it's actually quite good. Mmm. No value. It said that the day lily has vitamin A, magnesium, and phosphorus. But I don't think we're eating it for that reason. We're eating it because it's pretty and because it's edible and because it's fun to eat. I recommend that you try day lilies. Absolutely. It's really a fun thing to try. It's a nice way to forage for food. It's a great way to use um, things out of your garden on your dinner table, or your lunch table. Everything here was very tasty. I think my favorite were the batter fried buds and the salad. But I think they're really good raw too, just yummy. Just really, really good. And I think I will definitely cook these again, every single one of these little meals. We failed to mention and there is another part of the daylily which can be used in cooking and those are the dried flowers which you would pull right off of the plant. These are called golden needles and they are used in Asian cuisine and available at Asian cooking stores and they're used to flavor stews and soups so what you would do is collect them 
when they're like this right on the flower and store them in an airtight container and just add them to your soups and stews. So isn't that amazing that the daylily is such a wonderful plant in so many ways. Not only is it stately and striking growing alongside the road, but you can actually eat almost every part of it. So despite the fact that we did not do any gardening today, I hope you enjoyed our little foray into the meadow to collect daylilies and then to see what we could do with them in a cooking video. I'm really glad I did it. Um, all these years, <laughs> 25 years of looking at those daylilies <laughs> and never ever thinking about cooking them. I'm glad I did. Another little interesting thing about these lilies, these are the original lilies, these are the original daylilies, and it wasn't until 1920 that someone hybridized them to create the colors that we see now, because nowadays you can get daylilies in purples and pinks and yellows and everything but blue, basically, and every single one of them you can eat. So from Hopalong Hollow, this is Jerry, and we will see you next time.